in some of my other videos what I did was I used multiple gradients that I blended together to control the shading for instance I had one um, trick where I like to flatten out the lighting on the front so I didn't have this kind of slip and slide cell shade lighting going across the front of my characters by using a incidence angle gradient and then mixing it together with the cell shaded gradient to kind of just paint out the foreground here just to get rid of these sliding shading options. Now I can do that in the uh, node editor. Let's add another gradient node in here. Okay, add node gradient like so. Let's double click on that and let's say input parameter incidence angle and I'm going to add a key down the bottom here and one here. I'm going to make this key, I'm going to change its color like so. And if I plug that color into the luminosity, we get that effect. And if I go and fine tune things, I can kind of control the spread around the edges if I change these to, uh, let's change it to step. Like so. You can see the black area is where I want to keep the shading from the cell shade, this here. And the white out area is where I want to flatten out the color. So if I uh, spread that maybe the other way, like so, I now got the black area where the shading is stay. So that's cool. So I'm going to use this and mix it with this to end up with my final cell shade effect. So let's bring this back in. Use that and then use this to mask out the shading in the foreground. So to blend these two gradients together, I'm going to do this. I'm going to say add node and down under tools we have a node in here called the mixer node. And the mixer node is kind of a nice way of blending two things together. In a way it's very similar to the the blending mode between layers in the standard system. If I go in here and say let's say alpha because this is what we're controlling this gradient with to background color. You notice that the green which means a percentage gets converted to a color so it goes from green to red. That's all right. What's doing is it's basically converting our shade, basic, basically our percentages into shades of gray. And I'm going to take this gradient and I'm going to plug its black and white color into foreground color. And if I double click on this, I can say how do I want to blend the background and the foreground together. So let's blend the foreground back over the top, the screen. So basically it's painting out anything in the foreground. Anywhere that's white gets painted out. If it's black, uses whatever shading is in there. That'll give us a black and white color. So we can just take that, and feed that back in there. So now we still have our cell shading, but it's flattening out the front areas using that incidence angle. Now you can kind of see how these things can get quite complicated. The more nodes that you plug into each other and the bigger the structure is and so forth. So what you can do if you want to make it a bit clearer to yourself in case you come back later and go what's gradient 2, gradient 1, mixer 1 mean, is so you can actually come through and rename all of these nodes. If you select it and then go rename, we can call that, so we'll call that color swatch, swatches, or color swatch. We can rename that one by clicking so scalar, and that would be uh, light incidence because we're using a standard texture editor, editor layer. This gradient, rename, let's call this uh, cell shade, just cell shade, that'll do. And let's rename this one to front shade so we know what that does. A mixer, well we can kind of work out what mixer means. You can rename it if you like, say uh, blend cell and front and we're done. Okay, so pretty straightforward. The hard part of course is just knowing about what nodes do what and how to construct them.